Indiana Jones. Um, last time a bit of uh, last time I did a bit of stand up, um, everyone left thinking I was incredibly racist. So I'm going to try and dispel that myth. Um, I hope I'll explain what happened. Um, do you know the joke? Uh, uh, why did the baker have brown hands? Do you know the answer? Because he needed a poo. Yeah. Um, so I've been thinking about that joke for a long time, and um, I've been thinking, I wonder if that joke is a little bit racist. Because why shouldn't he have brown hands? Lots of people have brown hands, and it's not because they needed a poo. Just you know, some people have brown hands, and that's fine. So I've been thinking about that for a number of years, and then I did a bit of stand up, and the compare came on, and he said. I don't know many jokes, but this is my favourite joke. Why did the baker have brown hands? And so I stood up and shouted, Because he was Asian! Um, and, then, and then it slowly dawned on me. He didn't say, why did the baker have brown hands? He said, why did the baker have dirty hands? Um, so, I don't think I'm a racist. The only time when I thought, or maybe I am a little bit, is when I had a nosebleed whilst driving and I only had uh, a road map of Britain and you kind of know in those moments whether you are a little bit racist because I was like well I'm not going to bleed on my own country am I? Like, and so I'm sorry but I had to bleed on Scotland um, it's just it's not racist though. I just I don't I don't use that bit of the map that much so I think it's fine um, but there's a, there's a particular kind of racism that happens in the Northwest, and that is squirrel racism. Um, and it's very serious, don't laugh, please. Um, just because a squirrel has red fur, I don't see why it should be treated any differently. Like, would you especially go out and buy nuts for a grey squirrel? Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I, I feel like a certain connection with the red squirrels, like being a ginger myself. Um, but I, I kind of feel like People look after me now, and you know, people feed me sometimes, but what will happen when I go grey? <laughs> I, I don't want to be treated like vermin then. Please don't do that. Um, so, yeah, different topic now. Um, I'm dyslexic, um, and I discovered this when I was at uni. Uh, I had a test, and uh, it's kind of like a spelling test where if you fail, uh, you get given loads of money, so it's great. Um, so I did the test, and um, they said, OK, Hannah, on a scale from A to F of how dyslexic you are, you're an E. <laughs> and I was like, uh, A, B, C, D, E. Oh, right, OK, so that's quite bad. Why is the scale in letters? It's just not very helpful, is it? Um, and then, so I got the money, and so I had like £200 a year to spend on books. The problem is I don't really like books. I don't really like reading. I mean, I've got some really nice photography books now, which I bought with that money. But um, it's kind of a bit like the government saying, I want to spend £200 a year. Um, I'm going to give a budget to vegetarians to buy meat. £200 a year. It's just like a bit of a waste. Um, so, yeah, racism, no, no, no. Okay, so um, I heard that dyslexic people um, are often more creative, and I feel like, you know, I'm quite creative. Um, and sometimes they can be good at inventing things, so I thought I'll try my hand at this. Um, I don't know if you know, like, Inventor Tom from The Apprentice. He was an inventor. Um, and so um, I invented a cheese gun first, which was like, I got cheese string and glue gun together. Cheese gun. Um, I actually wrote to cheese string about this, but they did not reply. Um, um, and then, and then I invented something which helps my everyday life, and that is the beard sticker. Um, I don't know if any women have this problem where um, uh, your with a guy, in this case my husband, and they're not with them. Um, and when he's nice and clean shaven, this is great for kissing and everything. Um, and even when he's beardy, it's not that bad. But the in between, like today, 
that's quite, it's kind of like sandpaper on your face. Um, but he works long hours and things and doesn't always have time to shave. Uh, and this is where the beard sticker comes in. This has a nice wood veneer. <laughs> nice and smooth. <laughs> Lovely. So I'm um, hoping to take that one. I'm going to finish with a song. Uh, I've noticed, you might have noticed, lots of people in the world have written songs about love. Um, and another, I guess lots of people are in love at some point in their life. But another thing that lots of people go through that there's less songs about is having a teething baby. I think most people at some point in their life might go through this stage. Um, and I don't think there are any songs about that yet. So I've written one. Uh, this is dedicated to Steph and Nick who had a baby in July. A little baby Benedict. Okay. It's called Bondella. <laughs> Take a look at Boots magazine and I'll call on teething pain. Baby, does in the night, you two, your fingers tied, and that's why you need some help. I don't want you to yell. <laughs> Oh, shame about the bridge, never mind. <laughs> the end.